week, a strange coincidence happened. On the same day that the Liddell coal-fired power station in New South Wales, Hunter Valley, was shut down after 50 years' operation, Andrew Twiggy Forrest opened one of the country's biggest wind farms in New South Wales' central tablelands. To say Twiggy is passionate about the energy transformation, well, that's an understatement. He now owns the biggest renewable energy business in the country. And I caught up with him at Squadron Energy's Bango Wind Farm and asked him about that coincidence. Mate, it's the evolution of history. I think, uh, I think it's a remarkable coincidence, but the fact that we're experiencing the lowest power prices and falling power prices, therefore, to every Australian punter out there, you're, you're now experiencing a higher standard of living because you've got more money to spend on other things than bloody electricity bills. And, uh, and so I'm delighted that stinking old carbon bomb, which is like all the other coal-fired power stations around the world, fossil fuel power stations, which are destroying our planet. I mean, you're, we're not predicting global warming, Ross. We're living in it now. Um, I, it, is, it is a huge celebration that it closes down, but an even bigger celebration that this massive green energy generator replaces it and we've got project after project little old Australian battlers here mate we're not talking foreign companies we're talking Australian companies coming in doing Australian work with Australians and developing a totally green future for our kids. Okay Andrew you've also spoken about the obligation on Australian companies to be part of all this you're critical of them because you think many of them are really trying to obviate their responsibilities. Yeah look even the greenwashing of blaming the consumer, you know, saying, oh, you know, your problem is you're buying cigarettes and, and catching cancer. Well, what about you provide a cigarette without any toxins in it? Well, that, well then it wouldn't be a smoke, would it? Well, that's your problem. You are the, con you are the producer. I think people should fly as they want to fly, they should drive as they want to drive, they should live the life they want and hold us responsible, Ross. We're the industrialists, we're the political leaders. We deliver you cars which are made from dirty steel. We deliver you energy which is filthy. Blame us, hold us to account and then watch how quickly we and the political processes change as we deliver you what you need, which is a clean, green, zero-harm future for you and your kids. That being the case, you've now decided not just to be an iron ore producer, and, of course, iron ore being converted to steel as a massive producer of carbon dioxide, you've also decided to go heavily into this green energy space. Yes, for Fortescue Metals Group, it will be the first major industrial company in the world, Ross, which will totally step beyond fossil fuels. It will switch off fossil fuels. It will not rely on carbon, carbon credits, you know, of their kind of nefarious value. We'll just switch it off. We are moving away from that hideously big diesel fuel rebate, which, you know, goes to support the fossil fuel sector. Rich mining companies, I don't get it, right? We're moving away from that completely. And, Ross, we're, we're building a green energy future and a green metals future in Fortescue Metals Group, in Fortescue Future Industries, in Wyalu, and, of course, in Squadron, which is now the biggest renewable energy player in our country with the largest suite of projects in front of it. We want to see that company produce the lowest cost of energy in the world for Australians as Australia's largest energy company from renewables. OK, so take me to something else, and that's the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, where there could be $1.2 trillion US dollars worth of incentives for the energy transformation by 2032. Where does Australia sit competitively alongside that act? OK, so... Joe Manchin uh, and I've had a lot of discussions on this. Uh, he asked me to go and ex explain the, my points to President Biden. I did. We spent 50 odd minutes together. They have created an economic engine inside their economy. It was kind of cruising along OK before. But Ross, it's starting to pump now. The IRA is drawing energy, capital, leadership, talent, technology all into North America. Now, I'm an Australian. I wanted to see what's best for our country. I want our leaders and our industrial leaders to say, right, let's have a level playing field between Australians and China. Let's have a level, level playing field between Australians and Americans. Let's have policies here 
which at least match what they do so that we too can compete. Because you give an Aussie a reasonable chance, mate, we're the battlers, we're going to win. But you put us on a playing field where we're going to run uphill flat out before we even get to kick the ball, that's not a fair game. So I'm just saying let's have a level playing field. Let's give Australian industry a real crack at this because we can bring manufacturing home. We can bring energy creation home. We never need to buy another drop of oil from another nutcase called Putin. We need to make all our energy at home and we need to be manufacturing that supply chain ecosystem at home in Australia. And I believe this is shared by our government and they're working hard on it, Ross. So they might be working hard on it, but do you think the window for the opportunity here is narrow? Because Australian capital, of course, could simply go to America and chase these incentives to develop the technology and skills that we have right now here in renewable energy. Oh, Ross, Australian capital is already going to America. Australian capital, Australian leadership, Australian management is going to America. I have my own chief executive, Fortescue Future Industries, the largest green hydrogen developer in the world. He left for America this morning. Uh, so that's our leadership. You know, probably our first green hydrogen project, the world's first major green hydrogen project. I want it to be in Australia. Those incentives mean it just has to be in North America. So you're seeing it happen, Ross, right now. They've created a monster economic engine in their economy. We should do it here. As I've said to our political leaders, set our sights high as Australians. So we can produce an economic engine easily the size of Saudi Aramco, which is the largest energy company in the world by several times. We could put that energy company into Australia for the Australian people, we would have economic growth, full employment for decades. If we get our policy settings right, this is the most exciting country in the world to be in green energy. But we've got huge competition and the IRA is saying, well, we're setting policies to make sure that we win. And all I'm saying is, hey, Australia, let's set policies so that we can beat them from an even playing field. So how long do you think Australia's got to get comparable policies in place? It's a hard one, mate. But as you say, the window is closing and it's closing quick. But I do believe, I do believe, Ross, that we have ministers in place who are highly aware of this. You know, I've spoken to our Prime Minister about it. He sees it for what it is. He says it's a global vacuum cleaner drawing in talent, leadership, management, technology, capital into North America. At least we now have a Prime Minister, we have an energy minister, we have a treasurer who's highly aware that the greatest economic opportunity the world has ever seen is creating the supply chain ecosystem for renewable energy. They want a level playing, playing field for Australians, Ross, as much as we do. Andrew Forrest, it's always great to have a chat to you. Many thanks for your time today. Thank you so much, Ross.